Hey, Anshul. Hey, yes. I have a DSA problem for you. How would you solve it in a coding interview? Yeah, please share me the question. I'll solve it. You have 15 minutes to solve it. Please do it now. What? Hey everyone, this is Anshul Sadaria, software engineer 3 at Google. Today I am going to solve a coding problem live. But before we jump into the problem, if you want to continue learning from industry experts, check out free masterclasses on Scalar's event page. Link is in the description below. Now let's get started. Tip 1. Don't panic. Make sure you stay hydrated while solving the problem. Tip 2. Read the question carefully. If you feel comfortable after reading the question, your chances to solve the problem increases tremendously. You and your friend Mac love the DSA class which is n minutes long and the professor shares AI concepts during the ith minute. Mac is really interested in class but can't keep away for the entire duration. Okay, so we will be having an array A which will be of the size n and each of the element in the array will store an integer which says the number of concepts taught by the professor during that minute. Great. Array T is a binary array, okay, so it's going to store only zeros and ones, where zero means Mac is sleeping at that time. Okay, so this is also going to be of size N, and T is equal to one means Mac is awake. When Mac is awake, he writes all the concepts, but none while sleeping, okay. You being a good friend of Mac, know a ninja technique to keep Mac away for K straight minutes of the lecture but it can be used only once, okay. You can start using it from any minute beginning from i to n minus k plus one, okay. So this means that I need to use all the k minutes to keep Mac awake, I can't use less than k minutes. Your goal is to find out the maximum number of concepts Mac can write during the lecture because you are ultimately going to use his notes for exam preparation. Uh, this is definitely true, I always use my friend's notes. Based on the understanding of the problem, make sure that you prepare some test cases so that you can dry run your approach on before jumping onto the code. Let's write the requirements first. A is the array input concepts, size is n, t is 0 or 1 whether he is sleeping or awake, this is also of size n. Now we will be given n as the input, k is going to be the number of consecutive minutes. I can help max stay awake. We are going to get a and then t. Okay, so test cases, let's prepare some test cases. Okay, uh, how should we get started? Let's create two random arrays. First example can always be a random one. Three, two, seven, six, five and eight. So here n is equal to six, k can be three. For t, let's keep it random this time. We will prepare some more test cases. So what will be the answer for this particular test case. We need to select k consecutive minutes which I can help Max stay awake. So it can be this k, this k, this k and this k. For each one of them, my answer is going to be 12. Okay, so one thing I can observe here is that we will definitely be taking all the ones because since Mac is awake at that time, we will be selecting this in our answer always. So the sum will start from 16. On top of that, our options are 10 for this k consecutive or 
it can be 7 for the next k consecutive or it can be 12 or it can be 5. So obviously the maximum one among this is 12. So the answer is going to be 16 plus 12, 28. Uh, let's again have a look which k consecutive we are taking. We are going to take this. Mac is awake. I will wake him up here. He is still awake. I will wake him up here and he is still awake. So these three minutes I will help Mac stay awake so that I can maximize the number of minutes. He is awake and he writes the maximum number of concepts. So if you just calculate 279 20, 28. Okay, 28 is the right answer. So I think my understanding of the problem is pretty clear at the moment. Let's prepare some more test cases. Uh, we'll start with the previous one. 3, 2, 7, 6, 5, 8. 6, 5, 8. 0. Was it 0 first or 1 first? Okay. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Another test case which we can think of. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And all of them are 1s. Another test case can be 4, 3, 2, 1. All of them are 0s. And I think these examples should be sufficient for us to get started. We can dry run our approach once we have decided what algorithm we are going to use and we can think about other edge cases further down the lane if need arises. Tip 4. Take some observations from the problem. Based on the patterns that you have observed, choose a core data structure and algorithm. Find out if there are multiple solutions possible and make a trade-off based on time and space complexity and choose the one which is the most optimal one. So. Here, one observation I can make is that we are always going to choose the elements where Mac was awake. So we are definitely going to choose 2, 6 and 8. Now, the entire deal is what values I pick among the remaining ones. So I am left with 3, 7 and 5 and I obviously can choose only the k consecutive ones. So based on the patterns that I have observed solving a lot of other questions. If there are k consecutive elements, we want to choose the maximum among them. It's kind of a maximum sub array problem and I can use a sliding window approach. I can use a doubly ended queue perhaps where I can start with the first k elements. Uh, let's show how the doubly ended queue will look like. So this is a doubly ended queue. Let's start with the first k elements and here note the first k elements are definitely not 3, 7 and 5 because there is a empty space in between. So what we can do is we can replace all the values when Mac was awake with 0 because we have already considered those values in our sum. So after we have considered 2, 6 and 8 we know our sum is definitely going to be greater than or equal to 16 in this case. So we can replace all of those values with 0. Now this is our new updated array and what we can do is we can just iterate over it and choose the maximum sub array of size k. Amazing, I think I am able to understand the core algorithm which we can use. It's something in the lines of sliding window. So let's start with the k elements. Okay, so rightmost side is the front of the doubly ended queue and the leftmost one is the back of the doubly ended queue. Now we will keep a sum of the elements inside the queue as well. So at the moment the sum is 10. Now we will remove 3 from the queue because like we are shifting the sliding window by one element and after that it is 0. Okay, let me change the color. Okay. Now the sum of the remaining elements is 7 which is not greater than 10 so we will not update the maximum value. Now we can remove the element in the front as well. Adding the new element it's 5 onto the back of the queue. Now the sum is 12. 
this is greater than 10 so i think i should be updating the maximum value of the k sub array from 10 to 12 now i can remove 7 as well and add the last element which is 0 in this case this is the last element we are not going to process it further because the question clearly mentioned it was from 1 to n minus k plus 1 if we consider the question here it was mentioned that we can start our k consecutive minutes only from 1 to n minus k plus 1 now the answer of the remaining k elements is 5 which is less than 12 so we will not update the maximum answer and hence our solution will be 12 plus 16 which is going to be 28 so we got the solution and i think this should work for the remaining examples as well because here if you see all of them have the value 1 so we will add, do the sum of all of these values and this is going to be 15 and now when we update all of these values to 0 obviously the maximum k sub array for the remaining elements is going to be 0 because all the values are 0 and hence our answer is going to be 15 for this let's note the answers down as well and for the last one there are no minutes when mac is awake so we are not going to update the array it's going to remain 4 3 2 and 1 and if i do the sliding k window approach my options are 4 3 2 and 3 2 1 only and definitely the answer the greatest answer is going to be 9 so my solution for this is going to be 9 so i think my algorithm will work but there is just one little issue the space complexity for the sliding window with a doubly ended queue is o of k uh, let's note the space complexity as well it's o of k because the size of the doubly ended queue is going to like have k elements at any moment the time complexity on the other hand is order of n because we are processing through all the elements one by one in the array so it's not going to exceed more than n how can we optimize it further are there any other potential solutions how can we implement sliding window apart from a doubly ended queue i think we can keep a track of these elements using a two pointer don't you think so uh, like first my first pointer and the second pointer will be at the zeroth index and then we will move the end pointer three values away so this is going to be my pointers and the sum between both the start pointer and the end pointer it's going to be 15 and then we will iteratively move the pointer we will move both the pointers one step to the right okay i think we can eliminate the space complexity by this we are still using two pointers so it's order of two which is a constant order so the solution will work but how do we deal okay we can again update the array values we can use this array itself on the two pointer approach as well so yeah i guess we can eliminate the doubly ended queue and this solution can be improved from o of k to o of 1 it's actually o of 2 but since constant order is obviously written as o of 1 we will keep it order of 1 time complexity again like if you have a look both the front pointer and the end pointer both of them are going to move n values none of them are repeating the elements so both of them will move n times so it's like order of 2 times n but since 2 is again a constant it's going to be order n so this is not going to change the time complexity is going to remain the same now obviously i don't think we can optimize it further but looking at the k consecutive elements there is one more solution which comes to my mind and i think it would be good to discuss it at least even though it might not be the most optimal one so let me again write the example 327658 okay So one thing I observed is we are trying to find k maximum subarray and one of the solutions which I have seen for such kind of questions 
it's based on prefix sum. So what actually does the prefix sum mean? Prefix sum means that if my prefix sum of i, this means sum of all the elements till i minus 1 or i. It depends on the nomenclature, whatever you are following. Uh, we don't really mind like if you include the ith index in this sum or not. We usually keep i minus till i minus 1. So it's all right. Sum of all elements till i minus 1. We can keep it i as well. I have absolutely no issues with that. So if I am going to create a prefix sum array out of this, I'm also going to show how we are going to find the maximum k sub array using this. So if I'm going to translate this array, so what's going to be prefix sum of 0? It's going to be sum of all elements till 0 minus 1, which is minus 1. We don't have any element. So it's going to be 0. Okay, p of i is going to be sum of all elements till the 0th index. So it's 3 and let's keep on adding the elements. 5, 5 plus 7 is 12. 12 plus 6 is 18, 18, 23, and 31. Well, let's, let me just create some delimiters so that we don't get confused what the number is. Now, for example, if I want to find the sum of k consecutive elements, it's going to be, for example, if I want the sum of the first three elements, okay, 3 plus 2 plus 7, it's 12. So what I will do is, this is the 0th index, 1st index, 2nd index, 3rd index, 4th, 5th, and 6th. So what I will do is, for first three elements, I will compute p of 3 minus p of 0. For the next three elements, it's going to be p of 4 minus p of 1, and so on. So if you see p of 3 minus 0, it's 12 minus 0, which is 12, hence it's correct. For 2, 7, and 6, it's 15. So if you take a look, p of 4 minus p of 1, 18 minus 3 is 15. So this logic will work as well. But one issue over here, and I definitely said that this is not going to be the most optimal one, but it's that the space complexity again is O of n. And why it's O of n? It's because we are going to use a prefix sum array in this, which is going to store n plus 1 elements. So it's actually going to be n plus 1, which will be order of n only. And time complexity, if we take a look, to prepare a prefix sum, it's going to be n times we are going, like we are going to iterate through the array once. And we are again going to iterate through the prefix sum array to calculate the maximum k sub array. So it's going to be order of 2 times n, which is going to be again order of n. So this is not a optimal solution over the two pointer solution, but definitely we considered some other variant as well. Now going through all the solutions, I think we should proceed with the two pointer solution one and jump onto coding because we have definitely done the dry run on some of the examples as well for the two pointer one. So perhaps we can start the coding part of this. Tip 5. Once you have decided your core data structure and algorithm, organize your thoughts around it, marinate them if required and prepare a proper design approach for the solution. Now what we decided was a two-pointer solution that is going to be our core algorithm. We are not using any data structure, we are just using two integers i and j to be the two pointers. So we don't need to actually worry about the data structure. Now if I again Take a look at the example, just to prepare the design approach, 3, 2, 7, 6, 5, 8. 3, 2, 7, 6, 5, 8, and it was 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and 1. Okay, so now one problem that I observed with the two pointers as well is that we were actually updating the original array. What we were doing was we were updating this array to look something like this on which we were performing that algorithm. We were updating the values where Mac was awake to be zero. Now, what if there is a requirement in which you cannot update the array? Okay. It is very much possible that we cannot update this array because the array is immutable. So let us think if we can use the two pointer solution to mitigate this issue or not. So think about the solution. 
in the beginning our i pointer and j pointer is at i is equal is at the zeroth index basically so what we'll do is initially i and okay i'm not writing a code this is just a pseudo code okay so initially i and j are at zero for the first part what we will do is we will move j to k positions further we will move j incrementally k times and add each of these values whatever position our jth pointer is at we are going to add that value and whenever we move out of the ith pointer we are going to subtract that value let me let me show what i actually mean so let me again write the example with more space now i and j are both at the zeroth position so the sum will have 3 because j is at the zeroth index so we are going to have that sum is equal to 3 now as we move the pointer ahead we are going to remove j and move it ahead to the first index since we moved the pointer from 3 to 2 we moved the j pointer we are going to add that value to sum we are going to do this 3 times okay j is at the zeroth index so we actually need to do it k minus 1 times that was a mistake so we move the jth pointer to 7 now since we moved j to 7 we are going to perform this addition as well and initially our sum is going to look like it's it's 12 okay so now this is the initial state from where we will begin all right so what we will do is we will now incrementally move both the pointers i and j further we will move i to the first index and j to the fourth index let me note down the indices on top of this as well and we have 0 1 okay let me write this as well this is when mac is awake and sleeping so let me just create a boundary so that cool so we will move j to the third index now note over here that in the third index mac was already awake okay so what we can do is instead of adding 6 we can perhaps rewind on to the solution let's let's take a look back let's let's remove this i just realized we can get rid of updating the values okay or i and j pointer we can start with them at minus 1th index So now, when we move the jth pointer, we will the initial state is going to have values, all the values when Mac was awake. So initially, it's going to be 16, like the previous time. But we are not going to update the value this time. Whenever J moves forward, we will have a look at whether Mac was awake or not. If Mac was sleeping, we are going to add that value. But if Mac was already awake, then we are not going to add that value because that we have already considered in 16. Okay, so when we move j from minus one to zero, we are going to do this k times now because we have updated our initial indices. We will start from minus one. We will start from minus one instead of zero. So when we move j k times, we'll move three, two, and seven. But we are not going to add the solution where two is also there because two is already considered in sixteen. So when i is over. Minus one and j is at the index two. We will add three to it and seven to it, and ultimately our answer is going to be twenty-six for the first three indices. Now what we'll do is this is the initial state. Now we need to incrementally move both i and j. For the first part, we just move j k times ahead. now we will move both i and j one one time each and we will remove the value where i previously was and add the value where j is going to okay so when j moves from second index to third index we see okay 
at the third index mac was already awake so we are not going to add 6 to it because that was already considered in 16 right so we will move i ahead as well i was initially at minus 1th position where there is no value present so we don't need to subtract anything from it we will just move i ahead without doing anything else now if we move one step further we are going to 5 okay and we are removing i from the 0th index and going pushing it to the first index so we will actually subtract 3 over here because mac was sleeping at that time so we will subtract 3 from 26 we are going to subtract 3 and we are also moving j1 step ahead moving it to the fourth index and here mac was sleeping so we will again add it and here the answer will be updated to 28 now this is greater than 26 so our updated solution will be 28 in this way you can move i and j one step ahead again and find out if it creates a better solution or not it will not because i and j are currently at like when we move j to the fifth index mac is already awake so we don't need to add 8 when we move i from the first index to second index we don't need to update that as well because 2 was already considered 2 is already considered in our initial sum it was already counted so we don't need to remove that as well so a note to make is whenever we move i and j when we move i we subtract the old value when we move j we add the new value so the important thing here is if mac was not awake we are going to add and subtract those values if mac was already awake we are not going to do anything at all so this is going to be our design approach where we are not updating the array as well we are not utilizing o of n space as well and we are having a decent i think it's the most optimal solution that comes to my mind at the moment so with this approach i have dry run i, I have dry run my solution on i am very confident with this approach and tip number six is that once you have performed your dry run on the test cases that you had created if you feel confident after that you can move on to the coding part so let's move to the coding part
Whew, we finally completed the coding part. Tip number seven. Once you have finished your coding, make sure that do you do a dry run on the code as well. Because sometimes it happens that there is some gap between the solution that you thought before and the code that you have implemented. So let's do a quick dry run to see if there are any mistakes or not. Upon doing the dry run, I identified two mistakes. And there are a few important edge cases that we should be considering. What if the value of n is 0? If the value of n is 0, then we will not be storing anything in either of the vectors. We will not be updating anything to the sum as well. But what if the value of k is not 0? Then we should be checking the minimum of n and k and then make a decision based upon that in this for loop. Otherwise, we'll try to iterate through k elements. k can be greater than n as well. And if we try to access t of k, it would not exist and it would throw a segmentation fault. So this was one mistake which I found out by adding a new test case, which was an edge case, like k was greater than n. Another mistake which I found out while doing my dry run was in this line, we are trying to update the value of sum if t of k is equal to 0. Now what I missed out was that we were supposed to increment the value of k before we actually did that computation. So we have to increment the value of k before this statement and then check if t of k is equal to 0, which means Mac was sleeping, then we should update our sum. Now for the j, if t of j is equal to 0 and j is greater than equal to 0, because our initial statement says j is equal to minus 1, so we don't want to perform a calculation over there. Only then, if j is greater than equal to 0 and Mac is sleeping, we need to remove that value from the sum and then we will increment j further. So I think this solution looks good to me. Let me know if this solution is incorrect and what test case did you actually think of to identify there is a mistake in this solution. Hey, where have you gone? Solve this question. Anyways, done and dusted. There is an ongoing masterclass on must do data structures and algorithms for technical interviews. Register now only on Scalar's event page. Link is in the description below. If you want to catch me live solving problems in a technical interview, make sure you mention it in the comments. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Scalar's YouTube page, and if you never want to miss on amazing content, hit the bell icon.